Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to do a little bit of inspired coloring and then show you my play journal. All during the month of March, I was busy doing my play journal, and I know a lot of you joined in. The winners are going to be posted over on my blog if you want to see if you won one of the $300 to $500 prizes. I don't even know how much those boxes are worth, but I gave away a lot of goodies because I recently did a giant purge, got rid of a lot of my teaching supplies that I had kept for years, and realized they needed to go to good homes who were going to give them some love. So today I decided I was going to do some coloring based on something that I did in my play journal. I did this really fun background on one of the panels and I wanted to show you how to do that here on a card. And the whole idea with this card was that it was going to be this beautiful rainbow background. And I thought, wait a minute, I could make her rainbow too. So I made her face more yellow. Um, I started putting in some brown colors eventually because she got a little too yellow. But I wanted her to feel very rainbowish like the rest of the card as well. So that's why I've got that big yellow base under it. Prepared, of course, to go over it with a glaze of something duller if she stays too electric decided to put some rainbow colors in her hair too. And the cool thing about coloring like this is you don't have to worry a whole lot about shading. I did some shading on her face so I could make it look like there was definitely some strong light coming from the upper right hand side so you can see the highlights. But without worrying too much about realism, which is one of the things that I think I discovered during the play journal month, which is how much fun it is to just color and not worry about the shading and not worry about the stress of trying to make everything all perfect, but just having fun, having fun with color. Look at all these colors that I've put in her hair. You can get even crazier and it's totally fine. The secret to pulling off something like this is not just to let it be a little bit of color, but go overboard. And on something overboard like this, it was just so much fun to do that. Just the coloring of this background and thinking about her and the music she's listening to and how inspired she looks by the music just encouraged me to go crazy with the colors. So I picked all kinds of crazy bright colors, strong colors, played around with changing out some of the colors in order to find some transitional colors between them. So, you know, the, the pink was great and the, the orangey yellow was great, but I had to find ways to bridge them. And that just meant that I was playing with different marker colors to try to see what would transition between them. And at the end, I'll do some stuff to cover some of the areas where it didn't blend all that well, but it's a great exercise in getting to know your markers better, getting to practice what's going to work, what's going to layer over top of something, which colors glaze well over each other, and which ones are going to create the kinds of effects that you're looking for. And here I've just got lots of different background colors that I'm putting down here. I didn't put the colors on the screen, and I know this is going really fast, but the idea here is to encourage you to play. The specific colors are in a JPEG on my blog, so if you really want to know what they are, you can probably figure that out. But I want you to play with your markers. Just play with whatever you have. Play with whatever the medium is that you have. Just because my play journal month and my play journal challenge are over does not mean I want you to stop playing or that it's time to get on to serious things. It's time now to take whatever you played with before and do something else with it. So here I'm making a card with something I did in the play journal. This is working very much better on Nina than it did on the drawing paper that my journal was made out of, but that is perfectly fine. It was a good learning to know that I'm gonna get softer colors if I use drawing paper and I'm gonna get stronger colors if I use my Nina. That's a really good thing to know. So sometime if I wanna do this sort of background, but I want it to be much softer, Heck, I'll just switch to drawing paper for that project. So lots of different papers will have all different sorts of issues with them and good and bad things. And here, what I'm doing is just adding bubbles with my, my colorless blender, really simple. And then to transition some of the colors, because you can, if you squint, you can see harsher lines in between each of the color stripes. 
But if I make some dots in that color that go off into the other direction, make blue dots into the purple, and then pink dots into the purple and then into the yellow, and, and purple into the blue, and just kind of carry them a little further into the color that's next to them, then it starts creating that visual transition, even if there's not a really good blend going on there. And if you totally wreck that, then just put some more colorless blender dots over it. Any of these areas that didn't blend really well, you can still add more to and just keep keep working on them. Just make sure your dots are big enough that they don't feel like, like little tiny measles. Because <laughs> if you have bigger dots and even a variety of shapes of these bubbles, it's going to look a little bit better. So after I had all that color on, it was like, wow, I could really go crazy on color on her hair now and started putting some stronger color in. It had looked all bright and happy before I had that background color in, but then I started to see the need for more color to be on this one. But the stamp set is all about worrying or not worrying and inhale confidence, exhale worry is such a beautiful thing to think about every time you breathe. Pull in confidence and get rid of anything you're worried about. Next up is a flip through of my play journal. And this one I did each day of the past month, which was really fun. It was a fun exercise. I used all different mediums. I used pastes. I used stencils. I used stuff that doesn't exist anymore. Stuff that was in my drawers. A uh, lot of different techniques. And if I didn't have the right paper, this was drawing paper that I was using for the actual book. I just glued a sheet in of something else. I made tags out of stuff and tucked them in just had a lot of fun making a journal like this and trying something new. That's really what I wanted to play with. I wanted to play with those those picket fence brushes and see what they do and you know just drawing different things. Um, here this one was done on the day that um, that the New Zealand shooting happened and I took the stamp from the the girl on the lucky panel and changed her into someone wearing a hijab and did a tribute page. So that other side is the, the back cover, so this thing just keeps flipping with the way that it's constructed. So I used the same technique as I did on the front, which is in another video that I will link you to. And then some of the panels, I, I needed more paper in here because I had more days in the month, so I just created my own panels by sticking a tag inside and then attaching two panels to the outside of it so I could make all different kinds of fun things. And here's some more with some some pastes that I use, some Nouveau Mousse. Uh, I did watercolor, I did watercolor pencil, I did a ton of stuff in here. It's a lot of fun and it encourages me to keep playing and keep trying new things as well. And I hope it was good for you to have a month of just playtime. So continue that, don't stop practicing, don't stop playing. And I will see you again in the next video. Make sure you stop by my blog to see if you won. And you can also go to the play journal page linked down below if you want to see any details on the journal pages. I'll see you next time.